When we found out that New Balance and Stone Island were collaborating on a sneaker, it was super exciting. Now, the anticipation was obviously building since that announcement as they didn't actually reveal what sneaker was going to be part of this collaboration. And then when we saw what they made, I think we were all a little bit surprised. But either way, we got to break them open and see what they're all about. So let's do it. Let's take a look at today's pair of sneakers. And of course, that is the Stone Island and New Balance RC Elite. Okay, so we got the box and take a look. It's got appropriate branding from both parties. We've got Stone Island logo on the top. This is pretty much just an all over black box. Feels nice, feels quite good quality. However, you'll notice that it's pretty light because the sneakers inside are pretty light. So let's pop the top and let's take a look at what's inside. Breaking these open and here are today's pair of sneakers, guys. It is the New Balance Stone Island RC Elite. Some things to note on the sneakers themselves as soon as you pull them out of the box is an extra pair of laces which I think could go together quite nicely. Almost like a peachy or salmon color. I think that looks pretty dope. And then you also get this little thing. So this little card essentially is to check the authenticity of the sneaker. You can enter this number on the Stone Island website and essentially just make sure that your pair is legit. Uh, I don't know if this could ever be faked but there is also an RFID kind of little thing chip in there I guess uh, which you can scan as well as a QR code so it kind of links back to this specific pair of shoes which again is a pretty cool thing so here is the actual pair of shoes and again when I said that it was kind of surprising to see what model of sneaker New Balance and Stone Island chose to collaborate on it's because this is a running sneaker I guess I would have thought that they would choose maybe something like an outdoor style sneaker or a lifestyle sneaker model. However, this is a pretty serious, I guess, marathon running shoe. So these actually dropped earlier this month at various different Stone Island flagship stores and then they finally got their global retail release on October the 23rd. The retail price on these is pretty high, coming in at 220 pounds here in the UK or $220 if you're out in the US. Now I believe that price tag is the same as the regular New Balance RC Elite model, so it's kind of cool to see them keep the same price point. I want to start off by saying I wear a decent amount of running shoes casually. I find them to be super comfortable and also look really good. Shoes like the Ultra Boost, the Nike Vaporfly, all of those are really great just to wear around to the gym or just running errands in general. Again, like I said, they're super comfortable shoes. So my first impression of this sneaker before getting it in was just how good looking they made the upper of this and just the silhouette in general, I thought it looked great. But what I didn't expect was how comfortable this pair of sneakers is. Like I've never tried the Fuel Cell RC Elite New Balance running shoe, so this is my first time with this model. And I've got to say, New Balance is onto something. I got to skip right to this midsole because it is incredibly squishy. You know what? It's probably one of the squishiest midsoles I have ever felt on any sneaker. I'm sure anybody who's been wearing the Fuel Cell New Balance model in general has already experienced this, and you're like, yeah, I already know that. But for a first-time buyer, it's pretty surprising. It definitely reminds 
reminded me of a Nike shoe, something with Zoom X and of course the carbon fiber plate, that really squishy midsole, and of course that rigidity that you find when you're walking in these because if you turn this sneaker around to the outsole, you can kind of peek through at the center and they've also added a carbon fiber plate for some added structure when you're running. And of course that very generous amount of cushioning that they put on the underneath of this is very prevalent when you're actually walking around in them. You can feel that huge amount of really squishy cushioning. Now, I will say something that it kind of feels a little bit unstable, like you could probably roll your ankles pretty easily in this just because of how squishy it is and also because it is relatively narrow. But in general, that's kind of the theme with running sneakers. They tend to be pretty narrow. But of course, before we get too deep into how these feel on foot, I do want to just kind of bring your attention back to the upper because I think this is where kind of the sneaker meets art. So as you can see, they've significantly changed the upper from a regular fuel cell New Balance model. And there is a lot of really interesting details about this. To start, one of the most obvious things is this kind of cracked or shattered effect that the upper has, which again has a really artsy kind of look to it. It's something very similar to what New Balance did on the protection pack with the 2002 R model. And it gives that same aesthetic of raw edges and kind of again, just shattered. The base material on here is a very thin knit material. It's very wide and there's kind of like lots of holes. So immense amount of breathability, something that's going to be very great for summertime. It almost has a rubberized effect to it. So it kind of feels like there's some rubber woven in with the knit. Now, of course, this is where you see the branding from Stone Island on this left pair of sneakers. But of course, on the right pair, you get the classic New Balance logo. I cannot stress how much I like this cracked raw edge effect. I think it looks super good on this pair of sneakers and just goes with this colorway super well. Speaking of that colorway, it is relatively simple, pretty much a monochromatic color of a kind of sail. So it's not bright white at all. Uh, it definitely has some cream tones specifically on the very thin tongue that you have. Again, something that's pretty reminiscent of a Nike sneaker. As for sizing, I personally went true to size on these and that fit me pretty much perfectly. However, I will say that it does feel relatively snug as a lot of kind of running sneakers are. So yeah, if you're someone who's a bit more wider footed, I would potentially go up a half size, but other than that, your true to size should be just fine on this one. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with this one, especially if you're someone who has never tried the New Palance Fuel Cell model, you will be shocked at how squishy this is. It's a whole nother level that I'm just super glad that I went and picked up this sneaker because I don't necessarily think I would have gone for it otherwise, just considering how for the most part, I'm not a runner, so I'm not out there trying to find the best running shoe, but this feels insane. Let me know your thoughts on this as well down in the comment section, but that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. Thank you so much for coming through, hanging out. Thank you for liking, commenting, and of course, subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one, but until then.